Great day today, Matt. Um, yeah, if I start again. <laughs> it's like start laughing, mate. How much it meant for you coming back and everything around today, really? Uh, I think the important thing is that, firstly, when we got together and we had the game of golf yesterday, it was just like coming back home and everyone just dropped into their roles and the conversations just carried yeah. on from the last time you saw people. Yeah. But then coming today, seeing so many happy, smiling faces, I know times are quite difficult, the season hasn't been that enjoyable at yeah. times um, for the club, but you wouldn't have known it from today. I thought today was just a celebration of two brilliant teams, brilliant times at the club, um, and, I, and I think just embracing that positivity let us all have a really, really good time. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, again, I'm the same. I think certainly with the turnout from not only the fans, but the players. Yep. And how many lads wanted to come. There's obviously a few that couldn't be here for, for various reasons, but were desperate to yep. be here. And I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of, I think we're two teams that mean a lot to the fans. Yes. But again, for us, you know, experiencing what we did during those times. Yeah. And I think the effort that the lads made to come back, I think that shows how much the club means to us as well, yeah. and how special those times, because we go for our careers, and how many of them do you really have, you know, those yeah. seasons that you look back on, and, you know, you look, someone asks you, give me your best season, give me, and anyone would say, your season, our season, fans are the same. It's not close, know? is it? And again, you know, you, you, I haven't seen some lads for four, five, six years, yeah. but as soon as you step into a room with them, like you said, that dynamic, it just sparks up again, yeah, you, you fall back into where you were. And I think that's the other big thing, just having such a great look at your group. And it's very similar to, to ours in terms yeah. of characters, you know, great lads, and not just the team, you know, people, back staff. Brian and the gaffer, similar. Do you know what Similar, I mean? quite understated, mellow, hum humble. Yeah. And actually, actually translates into their teams. I think so. Because when you look at the lack of ego and, and the the way that people are collaborative and they work together and they yeah. want to work with one another. I thought that just made the two teams what they became and I thought that when people say to you, it's been fantastic, it's been brilliant, we've loved supporting you from the side, yeah. you don't realise how much we enjoyed it. Yeah. It meant so much to us yeah. because they've been the best times of our lives yeah. and I think it's not just you, it's not just me, yeah. it's the mishmash of different personalities that makes it so special and I think that's why our gaffers deserve so much credit yeah. because they were able to put the group together brilliantly. Yeah, and it takes a lot. I've done it a little bit, like really short, I've been mm -hmm. coaching, but to actually take that step back and actually identify, right, I've got leaders, I've got people who can drive the dressing room, I've got people that can make decisions on the pitch. Yep. And again, Bri was very much like that with us. It was almost like, go on, go out and play. Yep. And the players feel that responsibility when you're out there and you want to do well for them because you know they're giving you that leeway rather than some managers that might micromanage yeah. every little thing you do, they're on top of you, do it this way, do it that way. And again, I think that's a massive trait for both those yeah, guys. And, but I think the way that you look at the training ground, the training ground always sets a really good tone. And if you've got people in there that do things properly in the right way, they don't have to micromanage because yeah. standards have been set. 100%. Behaviors are set, accepted standards within the group, not enforced from outside, yeah. but enforced from within the group are stronger than anything you can impose on anyone. So the way that you want to actually work, I want to work hard for Sonks who's next yeah, to me, yeah, yeah. and I want to work hard for Blakey, and I want to do that, and because I want to do that for them, it doesn't mean that someone's driving me to it. Yeah. It means we're all driving that standard from within. I think you see that, and I think just to have that group of people back yeah. together again, you just get a glimpse of how special it actually was. Absolutely, magic. So the season that you went up, Joey, you're going to win the league, if you'd have gone back to your first day of pre-season and you're walking into a dressing room, what did you expect from the season? I'll take you back a little bit further than the first day of pre-season. I'll take you to the last game of the season before, okay. where we lost in the final against Swansea. Yep. And certainly from my perspective as a, an individual, it's probably the lowest point of my career by a mile. You know, getting so close, failing at the, the final hurdle. And again, for a group, we lost Bilzy, we lost Longy. Yep. There was a lot of, I'd say, uncertainty, but we weren't actually sure, if I'm being deadly honest with you, because we'd gone so close, but we'd now lost two of our best players. Yep. Could we regroup? Could we go again? And we had a bit of a slow start to that season, which we were quite notorious for, I've got to be honest. And I think everyone else was panicking a bit more than Bry. He was always kind of, we spoke about him already, yep. very calm, very collected. We'll be fine. You know, we've got enough in the squad. We'll get ourselves through it. And... It took a while to get going that season, but I can categorically say now, here at the end of the season, lads coming out, yeah, we were going to get promoted. We knew, nah, 
But it was very much a case of like, <laughs> you just got to roll with it. When did you know? Again, I'd probably say not until really, really towards the end of that season. I'm, I'm going to guess the game because I think I was at the game. Go on. Because there was a lot of outside noise about how good Southampton were. And I was at St Mary's, so working at Southampton yeah. at the time. And you roll, into, you roll into the place and I'm looking at this team and I'm thinking, I've seen you guys play. I've seen how collective yeah. you are. I've seen how strong you are. I've seen the resilience. You, they ain't going away. No. If anything, they're going to carry on strong to the end. And that's basically what we built everything that we achieved off. Yeah. You know, not necessarily being the best team tactically or having the best technically gifted players. With the greatest respect, we had some really, really good players in yeah. the room, right? But what we knew was that nobody would have an easy game against us. Yeah. No one's going to run over us. We might not have to play the best football in the world, but we're going to make it so hard for people to get on top of us. And once we then got on top, and what we ended up doing when we started going on that run, it wasn't just the football on the pitch that was winning games, it was up there. Psychologically, I could feel, we went a goal up, the other team's switching off. Oh, it's ready and they're on a great run. They're not going to let it slip. Yeah. Because as you said before about that team spirit, that bond, we almost went, right, that's it now. We're going to see this game out. However it has to happen, we're going to get the job done. I don't think I've ever seen a team that was as comfortable within themselves when things were going against them. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a team that had a level of composure that yeah. said, OK, this isn't working yeah. for us. It doesn't matter, we'll get a result somehow. Yeah, and I think a lot of that was probably not being the favourites. You know, yeah. that year we had Southampton, you know, West Ham, yeah. you know, two big, big clubs at that time that were certainly favourites to, to get automatic promotion and we were battling with them and it wasn't really till, as you say, that, that final run going to St Mary's, that was a massive night in terms of belief, yep. beating that team. We went to Upton Park, again, against the run of play at times, bang, go and beat them. And that's when, really, I think, towards the end, everyone was like, hang on a minute, we can actually finish the job. You know, we were in a good position, we felt we could get in and around the playoffs. Yep. But once we got there, we were like, we don't want to do playoffs because of the heartache from the season yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, for us, that was probably our story. It wasn't until the end of the season. Obviously, you guys were completely different, absolute runaway. Well, well you say that, but we weren't sure in pre-season. Right. We were okay, the group was good. Obviously, Doyle and Longy had been added to the group. And, and you think we've got a solid core, but lo and behold, we go and lose the first game of the season. Mm. And you think, oh, wow. I'm not sure about this. This this could be a, this could be a struggle again. Yeah, yeah. And then you go on a ridiculous run, and you know it's like when you're playing well, confidence builds. You got people who just hit a ridiculous yeah. peak, and and they take you through because we've got such a solid team of, I think Marcus, myself, Eva, Song, Shory yeah. played the majority of the games because we know what's going to yeah, happen because we've been there for a while now, and and you just add things. And I think we talked earlier about the group and the collective strengths. The gaffer would just drop a player in, right. and the player that would come in would have a worldie. The level wouldn't drop? No. Not, if anything, he'd go up a bit. Right, okay. And you're thinking, right, okay, we're going to go on, we're going to go on, and by Christmas we knew yeah. we're, 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 done. we're done. It's about how, how consistent we want to be right. and what level we want to get to. And that drove us on, even when we lost the game at Luton. So we only lost two games, but the game at Luton, the first words out of everyone's mouths were, we go on another run, right. we go on another run, it doesn't end here, and bash. We just bashed it out all the way to the end of the so season. So in terms of 100 points, now you got to 106. Yeah. Was that then down the stretch, the real yeah. motivating factor? Like you'd yeah. kind of had it wrapped up? We're that far ahead. Right. We are that far ahead. How big can we make the gap? Right, okay. What's the record? What are we chasing? Yeah. Let's go after it. And we're thinking, well, if we do it properly, yeah. there's no limit to what we can do when we keep on grinding, keep on going, we can get another one. Yeah. But the mark of that team, I think, was that resilience of, we got a Crystal Palace, we got a goal down, we scored straight away. Yeah. So anytime anyone got anything against us, we came straight back in their yeah, faces. Yeah. And we not only did we answer, we took it away from them. Yeah. And I remember we get promoted at Leicester, after finding out we got promoted. And we're playing Derby here, and it's a complete anti-climax in the first half. Yeah. And it's nil-nil. And we're awful. We've had a good week, obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's awful. And the gaffer just comes in and he didn't rant and rave. He just said, that's not my team. That doesn't look like you. Mm. Go out and be you in the second half. And we go 4 0. Because we just went, do you know what? Yeah. He's right. We had that switch. capacity yeah, to yeah. flick it and just go up a level. Um, but Longley comes on and scores. Yeah. And he scores a couple. Yeah. And you think that, that ability to, to change it up, yeah. I think it's a mark of a brilliant manager. So 
he, he deserves a lot of credit. We get, we get loads of credit because yeah. we go and do it. But the people who put you in a position to succeed, yeah. I think they deserve massive credit. We didn't have any superheroes. We didn't have any who was the man, whether it was a gaffer, which sometimes you get managers walking around like, it's, it's a I'm cult the one of personality, like isn't it? You know, yeah. if you lose, you've lost. If yeah. you win, it's because I've done this or that. But it wasn't it, across the board. And I'm talking kit men. Yep. I'm talking chefs. Yep. Everybody at the football club. I won't throw media people in there. That's a bit too far. But everyone was literally working on the same page. Yep. Common goal. You know, and again, that's a really powerful thing to have in a training ground or at a club. We, we had this conversation yesterday. So we're playing golf yesterday, obviously. And I'm talking to Coxie. And, and Coxie was with us the whole way through. Yeah. And he didn't play a great deal. He's in the squad. And we go on the open top bus ride. And he's, he's at the back, he's not doing a lot. I was like, what are you doing? He said, well, I didn't do anything. Yeah. So no, 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 see, stop there. Because you're in our group, you're sharpening us. Yeah. That's your job, you're sharpening you us. And it's a hard job. Oh, massive. And actually, managers spend more time helping yeah. you because you need it because yeah, yeah. I'm all right, I play, I play. Yeah. So I'm a happy guy, so you need, level. but you kept us honest, you kept the environment right, and that's really difficult to do. So you deserve to be at the front, yeah. holding you a trophy. You played as big a role. Yeah. And that's why I think the competition to win a league, yeah. you have to be consistent the whole season, yeah. pretty much the whole season. Yeah. That means no long runs of defeats, that means no big performance drop off. The only way you do that is having that squad. So yeah. again, I'll come back to Coxie's your example, JTAB for me, yeah. one example of that where Legend and obviously Gem were the, the, the normal partnership in that midfield. But for whatever reason, if they weren't playing, Tabby would come in and not just match their level, as you say, he's putting it there. But he'd do the same in training every, every day. day. Yeah. And you could have picked any, I'm talking that season, pretty much anybody in any position. Again, me and Jimmy might have played the majority of games on the wing. You've got how, you know, knocking the door down every single day in training and competition. Again, Hunty, you know, Alfie, when he came in, Robbo, he comes in in January. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're looking at it like, flipping hell, like who do we pick? And again, nobody's coming in sulking if they're not playing. Standard that's a big every thing. Day that is a big thing, though. Through the roof, mate. But that's a, that's a big thing that can't be underplayed. Yeah, you can't you can't undersell that. No, no. If, you, if you're going to come in and sulk because you're not playing, then you wouldn't be for us. And I think well, I think we wouldn't have tolerated it. And I we wouldn't have you. tolerated it. And the manager was really interesting. He'd not have a blow up with you. He wouldn't have a stand up fight with you. Yeah. You just wouldn't be there. Yeah. Because because that's not what we do no. and that's not who we are. And I think that identity and that unashamed identity yeah. of this is who we are, like us or lump it, yeah, yeah, yeah. was your strength. Yeah. It's definitely our strength yeah, yeah. because we were unashamed to do what we needed yeah. to do to be successful and that ability to go and do that and sacrifice yourself to that yeah. made everything no special, you are. 100%. Yeah. In all great teams you need great characters and I think why this one hits home with me, people will see us as the captains, you know, but certainly in my group and I know in yours it wasn't about one man nope. leading the ship. Different characters for different things, maybe funny ones, yeah. you know, the ones that drive the, the standard and training every day, um, the great lads in terms of socially, yeah. which again, very Absolutely. important role, yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, talk me through some of those in, in your group. Well, you've, you've obviously got the loud one, so you've got, Blakey's the loud one, so you've, just ask him one question and then put your mind on blank for 40 yeah. minutes because he's still going to be going <laughs> and he'll remember everything that's ever happened in any game yeah. ever. But the interesting part for for the characters and different characters of Marcus is a loud brash American, yeah. Eva is the ice cold man, we've got, so we've got Superman, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got Nicky Shaw who's really quiet but really intense and, and yeah, yeah. properly driven to be excellent. But the thing that got me about the characters in our group was the capacity for each of them to be themselves. Yeah. And that's quite special in a change room because mm. people sometimes feel they need to conform yeah. to follow the dominant character or to be a certain way. Yeah. But if you've got a place where you can be honest with one another and you can be open with one another and you can be open about your weaknesses as much yeah. as your strengths, then that takes you to a better place yeah. because you can be collaborative. And actually, I know, for example, Blakey doesn't particularly like running backwards. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I'll do that for you because I know you're going to win me the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't mind doing that. It's hard in training, like, yeah. can, can you tell you, you know what yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. but that bit of, you're brilliant at that, go yeah. be brilliant at that, yeah. the rest of us will make up the other stuff, yeah. that's the mismatch and the jigsaw yeah. that I think the, the brilliant managers I do identify. consciously, they do it consciously, they go and identify the yeah. piece that needs to go and fit, and it might be someone, Job, that made you a 10 out of 10, yeah. because you might have been a 9, yeah. Who can make you a 10? Yeah. And it might have been someone 
that mm. no one else suspected. Yeah, yeah. And that blend of character was was the thing that that I think we were so brilliant at. Yeah. I've just tried to chase a couple of yours around. <laughs> Who are the characters in, in yours that, that actually stick out for you? I think certainly I'd have to start with Jem Karajan. And again, he was one of that younger group. <laughs> and we had such a nice mix of that bit of experience. And it was added to during yep. my time at the football club. You know, but they weren't all here to start with. Um, but he was kind of, i say the leader of that little group. And there was a big, big, amount of them, you yeah, know, yeah. obviously Hal Robson, uh, Alex McCarthy, Piercy, um, the list goes on, Churchy, um, and... See, we, we remember them as, as the young kids, kids coming through. So it's really interesting because they really developed, they, I saw them grow from, and it's very cliched, but boys to men. Yep. You know, they grew in stature, they grew in experience, they grew in their input into the group, and certainly Jem was at the heart of everything going on at that football club big kid you know anything happening like prank wise or yep. banter wise he was always in the middle of it and i think the other lads used him almost to yeah, kind yeah. of be that one to go and infiltrate infiltrate the group yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. and then they'd be sort of coming in behind him do you know yeah. what i mean but he was the one that was always out there you know massive contribution in, can I in that a, sense can i ask you a question about that then I, th I think that's a really interesting character, and I've known Jim for a long yeah. time. Jim used to do my boots, for God's sake. Yeah. That's how old I feel. Yeah. What was he like after a tough one, after a loss, after yeah. a defeat, when it wasn't when it wasn't going your way? And actually, he might not have played well. Yeah. How was he? What did he do? Because that's the again, measure. He'd always keep that energy. He'd always keep I love that energy. That. And again, I think for some of the older lads, where you do take it a bit more to heart. Yep. You know, you do know it's. I say this with the greatest respect, I've been a youngster at the time, where you do think, oh, we've lost the game, like, there'll be another one on Tuesday, because yeah. they were just buzzing to be in and around it, 100%. you know, playing regularly, and again, he was certainly one that always kept that energy, Churchy as well, brilliant lad, again, coming back to someone who maybe didn't play as many games as some of the other lads, but was such a key part of brilliant stand-up, like, his impressions, like, and everyone had a role. I think that's the big thing. Then we'd bring in Casper Gorks, for example. Mikel Ledgerwood came in as the midfield enforcer. Yep. You know, Cas was that kind of strong, stern, look at you like he's going to kill you. Do you know what I mean? And the opposition It's all that well. today, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a few people, I think when Leach run past him a couple of times, <laughs> you weren't too happy with him. But, um, it got mentioned. We had like Griff came in, then you had Feds, you know, who was just like a machine, you know, like training, yeah. professionalism. We'd do shooting with him after training. It was harder scoring against Feds than another goalie that we play against. He just would not want you to pick score. Do, do you know the other thing I got from Feds, of all the time, all the people that I've known, and all the time I saw him work, was his unbelievable level of gratitude for the opportunity. You know, some people do, yeah. some people take this for granted. Some people are ridiculously talented, yeah. and some people don't get to where they need to get to. Yeah. But every single day, I saw Feds work. Yeah. You, you knew there was no way he was going to let it let it go by him yeah. because he knew how much how hard oh, he had to work to get the opportunity yeah. and then he went to another level and then another level because yeah. you know what I'm not letting it go and the tenacity to do that yeah. and the standards he set for himself I can totally see that in your training yeah and then that's again what we talk about people setting standards and culture and environment yeah. like he was a massive part of that um, and again I think gradually like Bry he would always say to us before someone was coming in the door oh do you know him have you played with him? Do you know right. somebody's worked with him? Forget right. whether he's a good footballer or not. That was, you know, we wouldn't be looking at him if they weren't a good footballer. Yeah. Is he a good lad? Is he going to come in and enhance the group and buy into what we want to buy into? And again, these were lads that had had good, good careers career. up to that point, you know, but still it was a bit of a fact-checking mission. Like, uh, what's he like? And, and that's the important thing of keeping that standard. Robbo comes yeah. in, yeah. you know, from a Premier League club, could have come in and been like, end of the road job, nah, he comes in, right, we're going together. You know, you're coming with me, he's got younger players looking at him like, you know, now, like he, he's coming to do this, like, do you know what I mean? How humble is that though of Bry to come to you and say, yeah. do you know? Because a lot of managers wouldn't do that. No, no, a no, lot of managers all. wouldn't oh, open up to that. Oh, there's lads coming in the door and yeah. they haven't even bothered to, I say bothered to, just ask the question. Yeah. Again, it's a small world. We yeah. know lads, we've played with do. them, we've played against them, we know lads that have played with them. Yeah. And that was always the fundamental thing with Bry when we're bringing players in. You know, particularly through that era, you know, what's he like as a lad? And that yeah. really drove the standards and again, you know, made sure that we had 
you know, good, good lads in no matter what was happening through the highs, through the lows, because you have to ride those times out and come out the other side. But when you look at identity, because identity is a strong word, I think it's a buzzword used in football yeah. a lot. Our team had a clear identity, but our club yeah. had a clear identity of the underdog. Yeah. A little bit of new money, yeah. new stadium, but nothing flashy. No, no, no. It was utilitarian. Yeah. It was just fit for purpose. There was nothing flashy about it. You've mentioned yeah, no yeah. superstars. Yeah. Good players, yeah. but all buying in. I think that identity is something that when you drop a person into it, they can either drop into it and actually go, yeah, yeah this is me, or it doesn't fit. And that's no slur on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Places and people just fit together at times. Yeah. And the characters that I worked with, and I think the characters that you've just said that you worked with, yeah. fit the team's identity, fit the club's identity, probably fit the town's identity yeah. as well a little yeah. bit. I think we've all got a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. Yeah. Because no one sees us as the favourite. Yeah. No one sees us as the glamour. And I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm fine I with that. I think you get buying into that again, you use it, you use it to drive you on. 100%. And certainly from our group, that was a, a big factor, yeah. So we've, we've just walked out there mm -hmm. carrying a championship trophy, which was an amazing honour. What, if you have to pick one, what is the one moment that means the most to you? What's your one favourite moment wow. from that season? First of all, how long we got here? Because I don't know yeah, 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 I've got one answer. On um, you go, mate. Don't, don't do a Blakey and talk for 40 minutes. No, though. I won't do, but I'm going to try and merge a couple. I know it's a little, it's cheating a little bit. I think... You can see why it gets on the FA board, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Definitely the night we got promoted yeah. because it was actually unexpected to do it that night. There was other scenarios happening and it wasn't a guaranteed one that we would go up that night. And I remember kind of watching that. into us, yeah. you know, the lack of expectation, yeah. the lack of fanfare around it, really. And because of something else that was going on around the league, um, we win the game. And all of a sudden, we're in a position where we've actually been promoted. And for me personally, actually getting to that point after so many near misses, you yeah. know, like four playoffs, not going the right way, particularly losing the final the season before. Yeah. And again, it's been out there quite a lot, the are we up moment. <laughs> Um, but I just needed confirmation. I needed to hear. Everyone's like, did you not know? Like, there's people on the pitch. And, and I'm like, yeah, but you're so dialed into that game and getting that result yep. that you're not hearing what everyone else is hearing. Yeah, there's lads that are on the bench. They can process that yeah. information because they're not in the heat of the battle. And I just remember, right, I just needed to, to it was Lucy Russian, she was like, I just had to say, oh, we are. I needed to hear the words, yes, we've been promoted. And obviously the fans coming on the pitch, they are moments, they are things that you can look back on and they're the ones that live with you. You know, like going up to the box, seeing every all the fans on the stadium yeah. being carried on someone's shoulders, you know, like I had my family there. Um, so absolutely that night for me was the one, but there was one moment in that night. So Jem, who again was a massive part of, of everything that we did and he had some real bad luck with, with injuries, had a real horrendous one. He was actually in hospital that night and it didn't feel, I say right, because he wasn't there. Complete. You know, it didn't feel complete, exactly. Yeah. And then we came off and obviously amongst all of the carnage and everyone was buzzing and like you just see Jem gets wheeled <laughs> in in his little wheelchair. <laughs> right <laughs> Mate. He was off his face, yeah. like absolutely like drugged up to his eyes. Yeah. You could tell he wasn't quite with it. But the fact that he was there with us, yeah. you know, even in that state of being half asleep, like semi-conscious, but in the little world, he looked so, you know, so innocent, like so helpless. Again, not gem like at all. He was always like the life and soul of yeah. everything. But I just remember him coming in and like all the that boys giving him a big, big cuddle. And it just for me that was the moment that it was like, yeah. We're, we're all here together, you know, we've done this, and um, yeah, for me, that was, was definitely my moment. What about yourself, mate? Well, you, you've put me under pressure there, because like, you've, <laughs> you've blended some moments together into like an amazing answer. It got like, you could, you could go to the trophy lift, I could go to the, to the penalty, and I could go to the Byron Kingsley. Yeah. I could go to lots of different stuff. But I, I, I take a lot of what I believe from the people that I've worked with. So Steve Koppel 
when we're in the box after we played Derby and everyone's on the pitch and we've won the league. Yeah. So we got promoted the week before and we didn't know, yeah. but we find that out. And then we play Derby and we've won it and everyone's on the pitch. He came over and she went, we just want to, want, want to bottle these hormones and relive them over yeah. and over and over again because they don't come along very no. often. And that stuck with me from that yeah, moment yeah, yeah. and that gave me goosebumps like, I don't want this night to end. Yeah. I don't want this moment to end. And it's going to, because people are going to disperse, they've got their lives yeah. to go to. But I want this to go for as long as I possibly can. Yeah. And I think that moment there, because of... The penalty is a personal thing to me. Yeah, of course. The trophy lift is a, is a captain's privilege because you're representing someone. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that it was here yeah. and everyone got to experience it, I didn't want it to end. No. And I think that meant the most to the, to the team. Yeah. I think it probably meant the most to me that, that yeah. we were all together yeah. to see it. That, that that bit of history, I've got to say it's history, yeah. history was so special because yeah. it's not a personal thing. Yeah. It's a collective thing. And I think that's what's come out from all of this. Yeah. Was, was the strength of the group. We're so, I know you were like the big bad wolf and yeah, you had yeah, yeah, that yeah. group and, and that mentality. Yeah. But to share that with so many different people, family, friends, yeah. your teammates, every single person on the pitch, I think that would be the one that sticks and you think, I want to go back there, yeah, I want to yeah, go yeah, back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't have changed the experiences after, because I think once again they shaped the group. And I thought that was, that was a sensational bit, not only of that time, but the time today, yeah. the time on the, with your bit and actually paying respects to your group, because I don't think that lots of people see yeah. how we respect your group. You might not know this, when you lot got promoted, me, my wife, my daughter rocked into the middle of, of yeah. Reading. Yeah. My little girl on my, my, little girl yeah, on my yeah, shoulders yeah. watching the bus go around, because I'd been on that bus, yeah, yeah. and I wanted to see you guys do it, and I wanted to see those guys that you're talking about, yeah. Jem and Churchy and Hal, yeah. I wanted to see them have that bit where yeah. they're in the spotlight, yeah. and I thought seeing them living vicariously through them yeah. meant so much to me because I knew them from when they were this big. Yeah. It was brilliant to see them grown and to see them today with so much self-confidence yeah. and self-belief. And actually, well, kid, they, they've got their own kids now. They're dads now, so Jen being a dad to me like, just, blows my mind, mate. Like, do you know how, what I mean? How old do you think because, I feel? Well, this is it. And it's like me and my missus, like, we kind of, like, again, really got on with Jem, like his family. Yeah. Like, it was a massive, we're all part of each other's lives as well. And we used to call him like our son, you know, we used yeah. to look after him. He was yeah. like, and like now he's got two kids running about. And I'm like, how has he done that? How is he even yeah. a dad? Like, how yeah. is that house even functioning function with him <laughs> as, the, as the old man? Like, but again, he's got to be the mature one. He's got, well, I don't know about that, mate. Um, but I think his two little girls are more mature than him still. But wouldn't, anyway, wouldn't be difficult. It just shows how quick time guys, time goes, how things move on. And I think throughout that, Again, going back to your point about how important those times, those moments, no matter how much time goes, we've always got certainly our group to look back on that night, your group to look yeah. back on that night you're talking about, yeah. and everything else that we achieved. And again, it is a cliche, but they are the moments, they are the times that stay with you forever. And you can't ever, whatever happens, whatever direction people go off, nothing will ever change that. I just, I spent a little bit of time afterwards going and taking some photos on across the far side, yeah. going and meeting some fans and going, literally saying thank you for coming out. And the, my little girl's walking, not so little anymore, she's going, so we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I said, do you realise I might not get the opportunity to do so this again? again yeah. So it takes time, yeah. it takes commitment from people to come. But I think to pay respects to the people who turn up and actually, do you know what? Enjoy and embrace that moment. Yeah. It meant a great deal today. Yeah. It, I really, really enjoyed it. And I thank yourself for being brilliant opponents. I thank the club for sorting it out. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? I think you can tell why so many people wanted to come back. Yeah. It meant so much to so many people. It was just a brilliant, brilliant day. I absolutely, absolutely second that. Ron Grant, who's been fantastic behind the scenes. At 100%. The former Players Association, everybody there, obviously everyone at the football club. Yep. It means a lot to us, absolutely. And I think that's the beauty of today. And I think, again, you know, for us to be able to show our appreciation, yep. we're the ones who are lauded, you know, we're the yep. ones that we're out on the pitch. But, you know, those times meant so much to us yes. as well. 
and it was just lovely as you say to, to come back and because you do you miss it man you miss those times I'm recently out of the game and you know this season for me it's like you, you get to a ground I came here early in the season I'm like wish I was still out here man yeah. I've, like the pitch looks beautiful stadium's in great nick like and you do you miss it was it like coming home absolutely even when I came back to do the game it's the first oh, time on. I've been back um, since I left the football club and driving up you know parking up crowd are there you feel the buzz and again for me for this football club I'd bounced around a lot before I got here yep and this was the first club I would say that I felt like I called home while I was here you know five years mostly great times um, but great people great place to come and work um, and yeah certainly that's why it's such a special day today and again those times that we had pleasure Thank Absolute you, pleasure. Let's not leave it so long till next time, eh?